In this version of our demo app, I've added a couple of simulated features. So here, if I bring up the app bar, notice I have three buttons, each corresponding to a fake feature. So here there's a bookmark feature, a pin feature, and a save local feature. And if I click on any of these buttons, then I'll bring up a simulation UI for that feature. So this is the bookmark feature, the pin feature UI, and the save feature UI. Now in this demo, what we'll do is make these features paid features by configuring and uh, coding in-app offers in our app. Here I've added the uh, app bar here in XAML, and these are the three buttons you've just seen. And in the code behind, I've hooked up click handlers for these buttons that simply bring up the fake UI for each feature. Now let's go ahead and configure our in-app offers. We'll follow a similar approach to what we've done for the trial demo. That is, before opening the uh, requested feature, we'll check that the user holds a valid license to that feature. So let me define a Boolean flag here that I'll call is feature enabled. And I'll call a helper method that we'll define next and we'll pass to it the feature ID that we're interested in. Now, depending on whether the feature is actually enabled or not, we'll open the UI or not. All right, now we need to make this method async and task returning. And we'll also need to await the calls here in the button click handlers. So async, await. All right, now let's go ahead and define the uh, check feature license async method. And for the sake of time here, I'm pasting in the code. And what, what we're doing first is retrieving license information and listing information for the specific feature we're interested in here. And notice I'm calling methods in the license manager class. So let's, uh, let's look at that. And I've stripped all the code that we had previously here for clarity. Now what we'll do is define these two helper methods. Get product license will check the uh, product licenses collection that's available in the license information class. And it will look for the feature ID we're specifying here. And if it finds it, it will return the product license instance that matches the requested feature ID. And likewise for product listing, the difference here is that we're first calling the load listing information method, which is an async call. So this method needs to be async as well. And again, it looks into the product listings dictionary. And if it finds the uh, matching feature, then it returns the product listing instance that matches that feature. So let's go back to our view. And now we have the features license information and listing information. So we, we can retrieve the features price. And then we can go ahead and check whether the, fee the license is currently enabled for that feature for the current customer. So if it's active, then we'll return true. Otherwise, we'll do just like before. We'll build a message and prompt the user to purchase the feature using this uh, prompt product purchase async method. So let's go ahead and define that. This is similar to what we've done for the trial demo. So again, I'm um, building a message dialog with two commands, one that lets the user proceed with the feature purchase, and I'm passing a callback to that command, uh, which we'll define next, and the other command will let the user close the dialog. Now let's go ahead and, and specify that callback. In this callback, we actually launch the feature purchase experience for the store by calling the request feature purchase async method. And here I've wrapped that in a similar call on the license magic class. So let's go there and define that method just like we've done before for the trial. So we're calling the request product purchase method on the current app simulator, which will become current app when we deploy our app. And here we pass the feature ID and the result is a receipt, an XML receipt, which is signed and we can actually validate that this is a valid receipt. Now in our caller, we're checking that the user did not cancel the purchase operation. And if not, then we'll display a thank you message and we'll actually open the features UI. So that's our implementation. Now to test our code, we first need to configure in-app offers. And again, we'll do that using the Windows Store Proxy.xml store test data file. So let's go ahead and bring up our local packages directory and we'll look for our app. 
Now let me open the Windows Store Proxy.xml file as we did before. And remember here, we're by default, we have a single product with ID equals one configured and a price of $1. And the uh, product is currently active. So what I'll do is replace this with our own configuration. Let me paste in the config. And now I have three configured products. So three offers, one with ID pin, one with ID save, and one in, with ID bookmark, each with a price of $1.99. And if we go down to the license information section, notice each of the product is inactive. That is, it has an invalid license. So let me save this and let's, let's run the app. And initially the in-app offers will be inactive. Now let me go to page two and I'll bring up the app bar. Now let me select the first in-app offer here, bookmarks. And notice we get a dialog telling us, prompting us to actually go and buy the, the uh, feature in order to use it. Now if I hit close, then nothing happens. Again, if I bring up the feature, and purchase the feature. Let me continue. I get a thank you message and the feature UI is actually opened. Let's try another feature here. And what I'll do this time is simulate an exception in the purchase experience. We get uh, an error dialog and the feature does not open. Now if I go back and purchase the feature, then it opens correctly. Remember here, the XML, the initial XML document will not be changed. The changes happen only in memory. So if we restart the application, it will go back to the initial state of the features. So this illustrates how we can configure and test in-app offers in our app. Let's look at an example of adding an expiration time to an in-app offer. Remember here, if I bring up the bookmarks feature, Notice I get a message telling me bookmarks is not enabled. I'll go back to the test XML data and I'll add an expiration date to the bookmark product. And this is a, an expired date, that is a past date. Now let me go back to the code and let's navigate down to check feature license async and I'll add a couple of lines to output a message if the uh, date is expired. So here I'll add, I'll set the reason to has expired if the expiration date is expired. Now let me run this again. And I'll try to bring up the bookmarks feature and notice now I have a, an expired message. So this is just a simple example, but there's much more you can do using expiration times, such as configuring time-based in-app offers. I've updated the settings contract in the app to reflect the list of in-app offers and their current license status. So if I click on the license info setting, notice I can see the list of in-app offers by their ID as well as their current license status. Or currently they're, they're all disabled. Now if I go into one of the features and purchase that feature, for example, the pin feature here, let me go ahead and purchase that. So I've now enabled the pin feature and if I check the uh, license setting, pin is now enabled, whereas the other features are still disabled. Now, if we look at the code, it's very similar to what we've seen in the trial demo app. So again, I'm registering a settings command here, which I'm configuring through this method. And what I'm doing is instantiating the license setting pane user control and configuring that. So let's look at the code. And I'm iterating over the list of available product licenses that are retrieved from the license information class. And for each license, I display the product ID and the current status of the license. And I'll add that to the settings pane. So quite a simple implementation. And that's a very convenient way for the user to keep track of the current status of each in-app offer in your app.